The On-Site Guide is one of the most useful little books that you can get your hands on, but it can be difficult to interpret and understand at first. In this video, we will look at the tables that help you to quickly select cable sizes, circuit breakers, the maximum lengths of circuits and the various installation methods all in one place. The video came about after several questions were posted. How do I find the maximum cable length in the on-site guide? What are the tables in part 7? How do they work? Part 7 is a mystery. Can you help me to understand it? And more. And the little brown A5 size 18th edition on-site guide or OSG is the only book that we will use in this video. We are concentrating just on part 7.1 in this video and even the first page of part 7 takes some understanding so here is an easy breakdown of page 73. The page sets out the criteria for using the tables in part 7. It tells us that we are dealing only with final circuits with copper conductors. All circuits are assumed to start and finish for ring circuits at a consumer unit or distribution board. The following earthing systems are referenced TNCS, TNS and TT systems with 30 milliamp RCDs or RCBOs. The ambient air temperature is assumed to not exceed 30 degrees Celsius. The cooler, the better. Disconnection times should not be more than 0.4 seconds for circuits up to 63 amps with a C-min of 0.95. Voltage drop, we have a maximum of 3% of nominal voltage for lighting circuits and a maximum of 5% for all other circuits. Finally, the installation methods should be as listed in table 7.12 in the on-site guide. At the end of the video, I've included some useful visual memory joggers for the many different installation methods, prompts that I've used for many years. Begin with table 7.11 on page 74, finding the assumed maximum load for the circuit. What is the protective device and what amps rating is it? What type of circuit is it? For our example, we've chosen a 32 amp BSEN 60898 circuit breaker to protect a ring final circuit. The table tells us that the assumed maximum load should be taken as 26 amps. In a domestic scenario, not every socket will be in use at the same time and not all equipment will be on at the same time. The breaker, we've decided, will be a type B with a disconnection time of not more than 0.4 seconds. ZE for the circuit will be 0 0.35 ohms maximum and ZS should not be more than 1.1 ohms when measured on site with a test meter. Do note, table 7.11 shows the breaker as a BS60898 when in fact it should say BSEN60898 but we knew that. The ZS value for different protective devices can be obtained from the on-site guide, table B6 on page 145. For our example, find type B on the left-hand side, the horizontal row, and the 32 amps vertical column along the top, where the row and column cross is our answer. ZS measured should not exceed 1.1 ohms. This maximum measured value has already been adjusted in the table for a C-min of 0 0.95 and a temperature adjustment of 80%, so there is nothing further for you to do to this 1.1 ohms. Back to part 7 of the on-site guide. We've chosen a 32 amp ring final circuit for this example, so go to table 7.12 on page 75. The table is full of choices. Find the section that is headed Ring Final Circuits towards the top of page 75. It reminds us 
that the voltage drop is 5% maximum, which is 11.5 volts for a 230 volt single phase circuit, and a distributed load. That is to say, several points of use spread out along the route of the cable. The load isn't all bunched up at the end of the circuit. Now find the correct protective device on page 75. We have a 32 amp circuit breaker or CB type B and the table tells us to use twin and earth with 2.5 square millimeter conductors and 1.5 square millimeter earth or CPC. On to column 4. What are the allowed installation methods for this circuit with this breaker with this size cable? The table tells us that methods 100, 102, A and C are acceptable. The full list of methods is shown in the on-site guide on pages 84 and 85 and also in Appendix 4 of BS 7671. For our example, we'll choose reference method 100, clipped direct to the joists with thermal insulation not more than 100 millimeters in thickness. More on this towards the end of the video. Still on page 75, now we should choose the installation earthing system and establish if the circuit is 30 milliamp RCD protected, if it is a TT system. Although all new circuits should now have this additional protection as standard. For our example, we've chosen a TNCS system with ZE equal to or less than 0 0.35 ohms and with additional protection by 30 milliamp RCD. Now we can find the maximum permitted cable length for the circuit. The maximum circuit length for our circuit and the conditions we've chosen is 106 meters, a ring circuit. So that is to say 106 meters from the consumer unit all the way around the circuit and returning back to the consumer unit or distribution board. A heads up now about radial circuits. If you change the circuit, you will change the results. Always check. This is the same table. Table 7.12 but page 82 and showing radial circuits with a terminal load. In other words, all the load is at the furthest end of the circuit. Think of a shower or cooker circuit. It's all at the end, a terminal load. The red box shows 32 amp breakers again, but now look at the cable sizes, 4, 6 and 10 square millimetres. And look at the big reduction in circuit length. For the radial circuits shown here, the only way to get close to 106 metres, as in the ring circuit example, is 105 metres with 10 square millimetre twin and earth. Ring and radial circuits must be treated differently and we should always check before simply splitting a ring into two radials. Sometimes it won't work safely. What are the different installation reference methods? Let's take a look. Page 84 of the on-site guide shows table 7.13 for PVC twin and earth cable. It shows the reference methods down the left side and the maximum amps for different cable sizes along the top. Let's take 2.5 square millimetre for example. Using reference method C clipped direct, the cable will take up to 27 amps, but the same cable for method 103, completely surrounded by thermal insulation, the maximum is just 13.5 amps, half the previous method. If you want more information, this data comes from the Brown BS7671 wiring regs book as shown in the fawn coloured box on the left. Page 85 shows the 100 numbers. Installation reference methods 100, 101, 102 and 103. These are specifically for flat twin and earth cable and are the methods you are most likely to reference in domestic scenarios. It's worth taking a moment or two to read the information against each method. 
I have a visual memory aid that I've used for years. I've visualised the letters and numbers of the different methods with a picture of the method. It works for me. It might work for you when on site. We begin with installation method A. Think of A is for architrave, with the cable tucked into the gap behind the architrave. Now think of the cable passing through conduit in a thermal wall, another gap that looks just like the architrave gap. So A is for architrave. Method B is next. Trunking is like a box, so B is for box. B is also for cable inside a conduit clipped onto a surface. It just happens to be a round box, so B is for box. C is for clipped direct. C also works for chased in just below the surface of the plaster and also for non-perforated cable trays. My memory prompt for this one, D, is for dug in. Armoured cable or cable in conduit that is buried in the ground must have had a hole dug for it at some time. So D is for dug in. Now perforated cable trays. How do we get E and F to fit this time? A perforated cable tray can be on end or on its edge or it can be flat. So we have E and F as end, edge or flat. Easy really. Methods E and F also apply to cables laid in concrete trenches but so far I have not come up with a suitable memory jogger. If you think of one, please let me know. Now for the methods specific to twin and earth cables, the hundreds. We know it as twin and earth, but the wiring gregs call it 70 degrees Celsius thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable with protective conductor, copper conductors. The first one is reference method 100 and I remember this because the insulation is up to 100 millimeters in thickness. Look at the cables. They are touching either the joists or the plasterboard or both. Reference method 100, the insulation is up to 100 millimeters thick. For reference method 101, think 101 is more than 100. So the insulation must be more than 100 millimetres in thickness. The cables are still touching the joists and or the plasterboard. So 101 is over 100. Reference method 102 has the cables in the same positions as the previous slides, touching the joists or plasterboard. But now there are two plasterboard surfaces. The cables might be encased in a stud wall. So 102 two plasterboard surfaces. And now reference method 103. Look at the position of the cables. The cable clipped to the joist now has three of its sides surrounded by thermal insulation. The other two cables shown here are completely surrounded by insulation. The worst case scenario for heat loss from the cable. So 103, at least three sides are covered by insulation. Hopefully you will find those memory joggers helpful or you may have your own method. There is always the on-site guide or wiring regulations book to go back to. Let me know if you find a better method of remembering. Meanwhile here is a reminder of those methods in the form of a list. Always keep a copy of the on-site guide nearby when on site. It really is a very useful book to keep in your toolbox. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video interesting and useful. Do let me know. Please subscribe to our channel to get easy access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can always type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are always adding new videos to our channel so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.